Now, I thought she was a pretty supportive girlfriend, mate, but she's, uh, she's off getting sweaty tonight without you. What's up with that? Yeah, off playing tennis. She's usually pretty sportive, but I suppose uh, race day is probably where it ends by the sound of it. Well, she's only half committed. I can understand that. She's a very passionate young lady. Of course, a handy racer in lightning sprints herself and really missing her racing this year. She's got to follow you full time no matter what. Yeah, she is. She's really enjoyed it for a lot of years, but uh, I suppose as she says herself, all good things come to an end. So. Uh, the family deal, they just got to the end of, they weren't enjoying it as much as a family and it was time to get out, so she's happy to come along and give me a hand now, so which is great for me as well. Absolutely. Mate, just listen to Darren Disbury talking in the background there, it's not something we normally uh, have happen. Your brother, of course, is in the studio. You guys are a two-car team, this real family operation. Yeah, yeah, no, we enjoy doing it together. We wouldn't do it any other way, so it was good he could come along with us tonight. So Hi, Hayden, you're waving. There's Chaz and Pete right alongside you to elbow him and try and get a sponsorship deal out of Chaz. He's come back to race, you know that? Yeah? yeah? When's this happening? It's happening very soon, mate. It's going to be uh, in February, so... Oh, great. Looking forward to that. Now, your racing, it's a big operation for a family deal. Sprint car racing is not cheap by any means, is it? No, it is tough. Look, we, um, we've always done it as a family, and I suppose my brother became old enough, it was kind of... Dad had always said it was only fair. He jumped in and had a go as well, so... I thought that might have been me spending a little bit less seat time, but it ended up, we ended up with two cars, so... Um, yeah, it's hard to get them out there, but we still enjoy it at the same time. Now, I, I've got to try and remember, who is it that drives the Magna? Uh, well, we both have Magnas, actually. You just never caught on to me having mine. Uh, oh. I just kind of sold mine a few weeks back, actually, so I've upgraded now into the Mazda Ute, so... Oh. Young Hayden's still got his going strong. There you go. Mitsubishi Magna, the world's most abandoned car. <laughs> How do you guys um, keep it going? It's, it's not an easy prospect, is it, two cars? No, look, it's a lot of hours in the shed, and I suppose when we keep tearing them up like we are at the moment, it even becomes more. And Yeah, the dollars are uh, pretty high up there, but I suppose we just keep ticking away at it and just get the bits as we can and try and keep a little bit of spares in the background so we can repair them if we need to. Who's the one with the biggest temper out of you and Hado? I'd probably say usually Hayden's got the biggest temper, but if you can get me going, mine goes a fair way past his, I think. Fair enough. What's your greatest thrill um, in racing so far, Pity? Uh, I don't know, it was probably a long time ago to be honest with you, but it was probably back at the 360 Australian title when I was racing them. Um, I think I'd only been driving for about a year or so. We went to the title and I got, got up as far as running fourth before I ended up having a spin. So started on the front row on the first night and that was a pretty big thing for a guy just into speedway racing. So it still sticks in the memory. Um, we've had some good runs of the 410 since, but nothing that kind of topped that, I don't think. We just saw a couple of shots of you alongside oh, a couple of blokes who are fairly average. Max Dumsney and Robbie Farr. What's it like when you line up? Is, are you no longer affected by that? It's just like, hey, you just done another car to pass? No, it's, it is funny. I mean, I, I always spent years watching them in the stands. I've been going since I was a kid. and you kind of got to put it right out of your mind. It's the only way you can, you can even think about getting away with it. So if, if you're going to go out there and race them, you've got to be prepared. They're just like any other guy. Um, they just happen to be guys that are fast. So you mainly see their tail tank half the time rather than the front of them or anything. So... Yeah, well, it's a, it's a learning curve. It's a very tough learning curve. One thing that's really helping this stuff, though, Terry, is South Australian racing is going off its head. Yeah, I'm really impressed by the cars we've got out there at the moment. Um, we've got some guys that are just so consistent. I mean, you've only got to look at Luke Dillon and Matt Eagle. Yep. You struggle to find a meet and they don't go good. And in between, we've seen a couple of first-time feature winners this year. Um, you've had Brad Keller pop up and win one this year. and then Stop right there. I suppose. <laughs> Let's talk about Brad Keller. Yeah. How are yeah. you guys going? Yeah, good. Yeah, no, Brad's, Brad's having a good run and we're, we're having a good run too, so. <laughs> Why do I ask you about Brad specifically, do you think, Terry? Uh, I suppose at Murray Bridge when we had a bit of a chat and I tried to get his, his address for a Christmas card and he tried to get mine and, <laughs> and we kept asking and uh, I think it was just too loud in the middle. We couldn't hear each other, so we kept yelling louder and louder. <laughs> but it's, it's a hard deal. You, you, you guys are emotional about your racing. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, it, like I say, it takes a fair bit to push me over the edge, but... Um, yeah, that night was just one of those deals. I suppose it's a racing incident. I, I didn't really know what happened, and I suppose Brad came across and just wanted to tell me that maybe I might want to improve my driving a little bit to some extent. <laughs> and, Constructive uh, criticism. Yeah, and I said I, I took that on board and said thanks very much in a loud manner, and <laughs> and um, yeah, we wanted back to the pits. So uh, it's good to get things off your chest. I always reckon you move on. Yeah. 
that was racing at the start of the year and look if we walk past each other in the pits we're still say good day we might not be having dinner together but it's not it's in the past we move on tell me about dad yeah it's actually great he's he's been around speedway all his life and it's kind of ironic that he used to crew for gary Dillon back in the day and wow. now i'm racing against luke so things go around in stages and um he just loves it he started off in v8 dirt modifieds got into the 360 class and and now he can't get a spot in the seat because there's two seats that don't fit him anymore in the cars. So you make sure that that's the case. Yeah, we squash him right up nice and tight. I'd rather have a tight seat than one that's loose, just so he can't jump back in in between. Terry, what what is a good result for this team? Does it have to be a win, or is it about bringing the car home straight, or is it about being competitive during the night? Or how does it work for you? First things always, just bring the car home straight. I mean, we can't exactly say we've been doing too well at that this year, but it's not through lack of effort. Um, and then the other things, we just try and aim for the podium. That, that's the go. Um, Hayden's just trying to get more consistent as he goes along. Um, I suppose even for him just to get heat races where he's trying to move forward each heat. And for myself, I'm feeling like we've got the pace now to run on the podium each week. So we're just shooting to try and get up there. It's very, very busy in the studio at the moment. We've actually got Kenny Mack from KRE calling in on the Skype very shortly as well. What are you doing with your engine program? Uh, yeah, we've used Maxwell Motors since we started. So yep. uh, they look after all ours. We've just got a brand new one in my car for this year. And, yeah, it's going really well actually. I've been really enjoying it. Um, just getting used to the new new power curve in it and how it works. Um, and Hayden's got the same. He's got a Maxwell motor, so we love him. We've never had any issues with him. So touch wood, we'll keep going like that. Um, you always have a big team. Lots of people around after the events. Very social, and Mum's a big part of what you do as well. Yeah, no, Mum loves it. We couldn't do it without her. Um, I don't think I've ever put a tear off on my helmet since I've been racing. So she keeps that side of things out of control. Keeps the cars clean. Um, yeah, we've got a heap of good guys to help us out, I suppose. Brad Farrell, I think you had Justin Sloan yep. on the other day, and Dave's helping out Justin, so we pinch the younger generation, and we've got Brad, uh, he's there every week, Andy Rogers, and plenty of other guys that come along. Oh yes, great. the PR guru, Andy Rogers. Yeah, he's The man great. who was pondering today, why are pizzas round and go in a square box? How much time has Rogers got on his hands? Yeah, you would wonder that. was that, a I Facebook status today, Rogers. What is up with that? <laughs> yeah, he's good fun to have around. We get that kind of stuff regularly out of him, so it's, it certainly makes it not enjoyable. It's been great to have you on the program, mate. Good luck this year, both you and Hado, both the Magna Precision Driving Team members. Hope it's a big season ahead with Speed Week and all that good stuff for you. Thanks for coming down, mate. No worries. Thanks, Wade. Thanks for having us. Great young talent. Very, very indicative of how South Australian racing is going off its head. And speaking of South Australian, the legendary World Series race director, Shane Collins, has entered the building. It's suddenly got a bit hotter in here. He's going to be on the program very soon.